I'm gonna give you the best general warm up that you can use for any single sport, and we're gonna start right now. When I returned from the Paris Olympics, one of the biggest things that I did when I was taking my notes was look through all of my footage and think through what were these athletes doing across the entire gambit. If we're looking at track and field, if we're looking at wrestling, if we're looking at distance running, all of these different sports that are quite different, including even swimming, I can look at those movements and I can look at those sports and the athletes in the sports and think through the lens of how they were doing a general warm up. So if we can identify a general warm up as doing exercises to just prepare you for that specific workout. It's something that I could do for if I wanted to get ready to do a back squat. It's a warm up that I could do if I wanted to get ready to go for a long distance run. It's a warm up that I could do if I wanted to get ready to go out and throw a shot put. Okay, so if we go through that lens, this is the general aspect to get the heart rate elevated, to get your joints warmed up, to get the muscles ready to start to execute those specific tests. Now, these movements that I'm about to provide, there's gonna be six exercises. These are exercises that you could do every morning. These are exercises that you could do before every single workout, whether it's a lift, whether it's a sprint, whether it's any type of jumping exercises. And I went through and I'm thinking, okay, if we can start to warm up with some type of proprioception, Okay, that could be doing things with your eyes closed. I've even talked about in the past, doing things where I'm moving around and I'm keeping my head on a swivel here, or actually on a specific target while I'm walking. That's gonna help with our proprioception. But for us, that first key aspect is going to be focusing on an unstable surface. And that's where using a PVC pipe comes into play. If every single workout we start on an unstable surface, Okay, now all of a sudden our feet start to warm up. Now all of a sudden our brain starts to light up. We start to feel different positions. We start to feel co-contractions and that's a key component behind warming up effectively. So when we stand on a PVC pipe, oftentimes when we get athletes that are beginner athletes or even older athletes, we'll see people sort of falling all over the place. They don't wanna move their feet at all. They're extremely rigid, very, very rigid. Like they almost look like an 85 year old man getting out of bed. But over a long period of time, they start to get a little bit more elastic. They start to improve their balance. So the first exercise in this general warm up is going to be get on a PVC pipe. And if you need a, a dowel rod, you can use a dowel rod. Anything that's gonna help you walk forward, okay? Walk backwards on that pipe, right? We wanna loosen up through the ankle. We wanna loosen up through the feet. This is even gonna help with some knee issues. This is gonna help if you have issues with your plantar fascia. It's gonna help just loosen up that brain. I know that sounds wild. And then over time, you can close your eyes while you're doing this. This is really hard for me to do right now. But that's gonna help me warm up and create more neuroplasticity. Now, if we focus on that as exercise one, okay, I'm already elevating my heart rate because I wanna have that good balance. And remember, this would be something, let's say if this morning I go out for a seven mile run, I can get on the PVC pipe for like three sets of 10 to 15 meters. I can get that done in about one to three minutes, somewhere along those lines. The second exercise, I'm gonna focus on a position, and I'm gonna go back and forth between the second and the third exercise. But the second movement, I'm gonna get into a split stance. And I wanna point out, this past year in Paris, I watched Grant Fisher, before he won his Olympic medals, I watched him do his warm up, and I'm going, holy crap, this is one of the greatest American distance runners ever. And he's actually warming up, similar to how we have our throwers warm up. And this is that exercise, he was doing a lot of T-spine rotations. Now, in this case, I wanna hold a band here, and I'm gonna hold the band towards the camera. I'm gonna go out like this, and I'm gonna rotate to 180 degrees. And I wanna be as stable as possible. Now, because I did that PVC pipe warm up, I'm a little bit more stable, I'm a little bit more balanced. Oftentimes, we'll see athletes, when they first start to do this T-spine rotation in a split stance, they'll start to fall over, okay? They'll fall over, or they just sort of rotate like this or oftentimes they'll do this, which is a lot easier. So we wanna have that lead leg here. We're gonna be about shoulder width apart. We're gonna hold here, and I wanna rotate all the way back around, okay? All the way. And you're gonna feel that pull through this trunk right here, through your abs, okay? And you wanna start to really feel 
Tension here, tension in the glute, tension through your entire foot. Okay, this is where that general warm up comes into play. This is an exercise that's absolutely tremendous. So let's say we do the PVC pipe walks, then we do the split stance rotations. I'm gonna go to this side. Oh, I'm a little stiff. Oh. So now let's say we go seven on each side and we hold here. I'm gonna go to 180 degrees. I don't want this. I wanna rotate and try and hold that position. Now, the next step, and this is where we could do the T-spine rotations, okay? And then we can do our trunk roll. And I actually think the best way to do this part of the warm up, we do all of the PVC pipes, then we go into the T-spine rotation, and then we go to the trunk roll. The trunk roll, for me, is extraordinarily challenging, okay? Very, very challenging. But as I loosen up, and as I feel my trunk, and my glutes, and my trunk, and my glutes, I actually do a better job on the T-spine rotation. So this is the third part of our general warm-up now. I'm gonna get into this position, oh, and I wanna hold like a hollow position, okay? I'm already shaking here. Now, I wanna think about shoulder here, and I wanna try and sweep my elbow underneath so that I'm not pushing off here. It's not gonna happen, I'm gonna cheat. But we're gonna get here. Now, I'm in that Superman position, okay? I got my glutes. Arch in my T-spine, I'm gonna try and sweep this back through, bring my left elbow up over top. Oh, and I just cheated, okay? Now, I'm holding this hollow. I'm gonna roll this way, okay? I'm take my mic, like this. Notice how much better I am to that side. Now, what's cool is that you can see, for some reason, my right side is much more active and I can sort of get to that roll a lot more effectively then when I come back, ooh, oh, here, I'm so bad at that side. So you can do four to five rolls to each side and then get back into that T-spine rotation. And now guess what? You're in that rotational position. You get a good sweat rolling. Your heart rate is elevated and you're just starting to wake up that trunk control. We know that trunk control is key behind being a really high level athlete. That's probably why Grant Fisher was doing this and that led to him be having his stellar performances in Paris. So these are the first three exercises. And fortunately for you guys, inside of our strength training app, we have a brand new update where all of our exercises, all of our warmups are based off of this specific general warmup. Every single day, we're gonna try and challenge you with these types of movement patterns to increase your performance in your lifts, in your jumps, in your sprints, even if you're in the athletic fitness portion to improve your overall fitness level as a normal person. So now we're gonna get into three more of these exercises to try and advance your capability based off of this general warm-up. So the fourth part of this entire warm-up, and this is again something that if you're an American football coach, you can do this warm-up. It's gonna take you 10 to 12 minutes. I did this warm-up this morning before my run. It took me about seven to 10 minutes because I went two times through with every exercise. Now, the next movement is going to be, we can get into this position and you can do just an RDL, come up and hold a hip lock. And an interesting aspect here is that when I was watching the Dutch sprinters warm up, at the games, okay, in Paris. A lot of them would do walking hip locks like this, here, here, walking hip lock, here, walking hip lock. Now, that was sort of before they got into their sprint work. I like to think about this, you go RDL, here, squeeze. RDL, here, squeeze. Now, a little bit more advanced variation, you could do RDL, come up here, squeeze, RDL, come up here, squeeze. And the goal would be that when you do the RDL, you're not sort of flailing all over, you're holding that linear position. And then on the second set, what you could do, you could sort of do like a hip airplane here. Hip airplane, if you wanna get a little bit more advanced, and that's a little bit more challenging. But let's say you just do five reps to each side. Again, now we're still in our socks. <laughs> we're still feeling that foot pressure. Okay, we're trying to feel the hamstrings, the glutes, you'll start to feel your lower back a bit already from those trunk rolls. You'll feel the abs and your core working and that upper back. So everything's really starting to wake up. That's one thing that we've got to think through is that in a general warm up, we want to think about waking up the brain, okay? Meaning the brain's juices get flowing, we're a little bit more potentiated. That's a big concept. The second thing, get the heart rate up. 
Third thing, because the heart rate's up, body temperature will rise, right? Or that might go back and forth. And then we're gonna work into specific joint angles and joint positions. Okay, so we just did the RDL to the hip lock. The next thing, I wanna get a little bit more full range of motion work for my hips and for my ankles. So here, I'm gonna go and do a full squat, almost like a catcher's position here. I can feel my, my hips are a little bit tight. The goal would be, I would hold my heels down. And I'm just gonna do some easy bounces forward, okay? Easy bounces backwards. Nice and easy, okay? So that by the time I go five meters forward, five meters back, I'm sitting in a deeper position and I feel comfortable. This is where I'll feel my lower back lengthen. I'll feel my hips open up a little bit here. I'll feel my ankles and my Achilles in the front part of my foot start to feel like they're getting lengthened a little bit. And then that's something that we can go through two times. Again, when we think through this, we can do those back to back with about 30 seconds rest. And by the time you're done your second set of duck walks, ooh, 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 here, come back. Now, this is comfortable, okay? I'm in a good position and I can hold this position and I feel good, I feel limber, I feel more elastic, okay? And then finally, so we go through those RDLs to the hip lock. We go into the duck walks. Finally, we're gonna get more explosive and more reactive. And I wanna get explosive, reactive, through a deep range of motion. We've tried to open up the thoracic spine. We've tried to wake up the, the core. We've tried to wake up the back so that we have that good trunk control, really wake up the glutes. The final thing, we can get the nervous system firing even a little bit more. So we can go here. Boom, 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 boom. We can go back and forth, okay? So little duck hops, duck hops, duck hops. Okay, and the big thing here is being springy so that our ankle joint thinks about that little reaction, that good ground contact with a good reaction, being elastic through the hip, through the knee, through the ankle. Okay, so this is the general warm-up. I usually recommend going through everything two sets. If the PVC pipe takes a while, do three sets of the PVC and one set of everything else, and then as you get better at the warm-up, you're gonna notice that your specific workouts are going to improve because you're a little bit more aware of how your body is moving. So this is something that we use inside of our strength training at Peak Strength. We use this to improve overall functionality. I believe this is one of the best, if not the best general warmup that you can do. And there's a couple different variations that we can throw in and that we use inside of our app Peak Strength. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store. Download Peak Strength, select your specific sport that you wanna train for because remember, freaks. If you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.